anything new is introduced, there's a fear of the unknown. And who can blame people? How many times have we been told something was safe only to find out later there is long-term health consequences? We are here tonight in front of the Costa Mesa City Hall discussing some of these fears with people over the 5G cell towers. So can you please tell me why we're here at City Council tonight? We are all very concerned about the rollout of the small cells throughout the city and we want to have a voice. We have read the proposed design guidelines and they are not what we are looking for. We are concerned for our property values, for the health of our kids, and the overall democratic process that is being taken away from us. How do you buy a house in Costa Mesa when you're faced with lower property values? We're talking about HUD talking about property values being lowered by as much as 20 percent, 20 percent. So how does somebody who's been modestly successful put a million dollars into a home in a town like Costa Mesa where your resale value three or four or five years from now with a 5G cell tower may be 20 percent lower. I, I, I just can't believe that a city council would blindly vote that direction. The other thing I'm tr I, I really find disturbing is if you look at the Telecommunications Act of 1996, there's a clause in there that says that local communities have no say on health or no say on the dangers of this untested technology. How, how do people live with that type of, of lack of, of oversight or, or say in a democracy? I mean, that's just absolutely mind-blowing to me. And at this time of my life, when I should be chilling out, spending my money, looking at retirement in beautiful Southern California, how can you look at a place like this where they're cramming this kind of thing into a community against the will of the people in the community? It's astounding. Your sign says concerned parent. What school are you representing? Uh, okay, I have two school-aged children. They are in Boyle Heights. And we have, a, uh, what do you call it, we have a community grassroots organization dedicated to fighting 5G technology. This technology has been shown in recent studies, 2008, 2019, uh, Navy, uh, what do you call it, uh, assigned, what do you call it, uh, study, shows eight types of cancer. Uh, we have, and, and we're, we're building these towers willy-nilly like, like, you know, there's no tomorrow. It's very short-term uh, in terms of like the, the health risks that are, what do you call it, at risk. This should be looked into. It definitely should be looked into. It, it is criminal. The amount of radiation, the G, G, G5, no, G4, G4, G5, uh, and uh, 4 are, are, what do you call it, it have been extensively uh, uh, what we call it, examined, and they are definitely cancerous. So why are we rolling out 5G? Yeah, it's just wrong. As I said, it's criminal. Uh, there are issues with, uh, what do you call it, uh, genetic, what do you call it, uh, chromosomal changes in, in women that are gestating. We, we see problems with uh, people with pacemakers, okay? You got a pacemaker, it's going to keep you off, you know, sink. Also, there are, what do you call it, memory uh, problems, memories with... Uh, problems with memory, problems with, what do you call it, uh, um, sleep. They're actually trying to put one of these small cell facilities uh, 17 feet from my living room window, so I have a lot of concerns about that. Originally the city had clauses that you had to be notified within 75 feet and 100 feet, and so I'm just wondering why 17 feet feels okay for them all of a sudden. Now they're talking about things like 10 feet from a driveway, we won't get any notification. You know, it's not very aesthetically pleasing to have this new alteration to every single pole in the city, and it seems kind of ridiculous to me that there's no master plan. You know, I look at it from the standpoint of we are kind of stuck with the oligopoly of cell phone companies and when they want to work against us they absolutely will but they won't band together to help us and they won't band together to come up with a master plan and it just feels like a power grab where the cell phone companies haven't proven that they actually already need these cell towers yet but they're just getting them and getting permits for them and we've actually heard discussion that they're suggesting that later on they'll use them to negotiate with each other and so how does that help us the city doesn't make any money off of it. Southern California Edison is the only one that makes money. Uh, we don't get any revenue from the city. We don't get anything from it. And there's no testing. And the, the basically the procedure at this point is for 10 years, there's nothing that we can do. So once they're up, as long as they stay within the designated shroud, they can do whatever they want. And we won't be notified. There's no independent testing. There's nothing to prove that this is safe. How does it harm property values? The 
the uh, Health and Urban Development Department uh, actually asked their FHA appraisers to discount home values when they are next to sell sites. And actually, they refused to underwrite any FHA loans if the homes are within the fall uh, zone of any cell tower. Wouldn't better cell reception improve home values, though? I'm not sure that uh, we're talking about cell reception. I think uh, we're not against technology, against positive te technology, but we do want it to be implemented safely, just like other cities have done. Yeah, what about the health concerns? What are those about? There has been uh, significant studies uh, done on the effects of non-ionizing radiation, which up until this point, the FDA has told us that is safe. The FDA has not updated its safety thresholds in more than 23 years. Uh, a Kaiser study performed in 2017 has determined that the risk of miscarriages across a thousand pregnant women increased by 300 percent as a result of EMF non-ionizing radiation. Um, I'm concerned that our voices in Costa Mesa are not being heard by our elected representatives. Um, there is a lot more that can be done um, regarding this issue. Uh, the other thing I'm concerned about is it seems to be kind of a patchwork quilt kind of look. One of the things that as of three months ago when they published the map of the approved cell towers, the majority of them were in north and west coast of Mesa, which tends to have a little bit lower property values than east coast of Mesa, which is kind of surprising. East coast of Mesa already has underground utilities, and supposedly they're, they're probably going to share some of Newport Beach's cell towers where they have a much stronger ordinance than we have. So it's interesting from a political standpoint and an economic standpoint why all these cell towers are being approved for the areas that are above ground utilities and their property values are a little bit lower than the higher rent districts. So that's a little bit of a concern. A freedom-loving American, people have to, have to uh, be passionate about these kind of issues. If they can cram this into the, the face of citizens against their will, what else is down the road? Why, why the rush? Why are they trying to silence people? Why are they trying to put these towers up literally in front of every other house? That's the plan. Every other house, friends. Every other house. And it will take your property values down 10 or 20 percent and create a danger for your family, for your kids, for your loved ones. No, that's not acceptable. What are your thoughts on the 5G cell towers being discussed tonight? Well, I'm not sure I totally buy that there's nothing we can do about them. I sure hope there's something we can do about it. And that uh, apparently they want to end the hearings on these and let them just be an administrative process. I think that will prevent the public from building up a record about their concerns about this. And yeah, it's tedious. Um, the Planning Commission has to hear it. It's a lot of work for everybody to, to sit through these and hear the same people say the same things or different people when it moves to a different neighborhood, then they'll be concerned about what's going to happen to their brains in their neighborhood. Um, and, and I think that to cut off the voice of the people would be a mistake because that's how I think we're going to be able to get a more reasonable deal on this to get at the truth about it is if people just keep talking and it can't be ignored. What can City Council actually do? What do they have in their power? They have a lot in their power. Right now, um, various cities, both here in Southern California, Northern California, and across the nation, are beginning to make ordinances that are wide-ranging. So they're looking forward not just to two years from now for 5G, but longer, like 10, 20 years. What do you do with this technology when this technology gets out of date? What do you do with this equipment? Who's taking care of it? Who's going to be responsible? What if one of the things goes rogue and you suddenly have RF emissions that are off the charts? No, none of the things that they are doing are addressing that. With some of the other codes are doing that in other cities. In addition, all they are doing tonight is they are asking for a new design guideline on the type of structures that will be put up in the city so that they are more appealing um, and supposedly they have a little more um, monitoring value to them. But really that's all they're doing. Where we had asked for an actual code on a long-term range plan for telecommunications and that's what we're not getting. So yes, they can do a lot more. 
We've been talking to a lot of people today about their concerns of 5G. Let's start with the health concerns. Are there any health concerns? Well, there's been extensive studies in my experience. I've read many of the studies and I certainly uh, am familiar with a lot of it. I'm not a scientist, so I put my trust in the scientists who are experts, the physicists and those that, that serve and sit on the bodies that have analyzed this stuff and set the guidelines. And those people that set the guidelines are members of the Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers. Are, are members of the uh, National Standards Institute and all these bodies, and I trust that they, who are the experts, know what they're doing when they establish uh, safe guidelines. I know uh, radio frequency emissions, we have them everywhere. We have Wi-Fi in our house that's operating at the 5 gigahertz and the 2.5 gigahertz bandwidth, and, and this is really no different than that. And so for someone to say they're concerned about health, health effects uh, of, of a cell tower, per se, uh, one is, they, are they removing all the Wi-Fi from their home? I mean, are we really that serious? Because it's a very similar technology. It's, we're, it's using the same uh, frequencies and the same bandwidth and the same uh, emissions, so to speak. Um, and so in, in my personal experience and in, in what I've studied and read, um, there's no significant statistical evidence to support any real dangerous health effects. And again, I put my trust in the experts that are, that are experts in the field that study it and that understand the technology, and there are many of them. I think most of this, people mistake 5G as being somehow drastically different than 4G or 3G. 5G is just the next generation. It's just using the same basic technology at a little higher frequencies that get faster speeds and so forth. It's not like the radio frequency emissions are vastly different. It's not like the technology is vastly different. It's just different frequencies, and they all work within the non-ionizing RF frequencies that have been established by experts who tell us that it's well within safety standards and well in, within safety parameters. So I put my trust in the bodies of scientists rather than the emotions uh, of, you know, I don't want to say propaganda, but just, you know, people feeding off of uh, media frenzy, uh, you know, kind of uh, conspiracy theories. The city attorney has already said that we needed to contact our representatives in Congress. And we have, but I also believe that the city should be doing that on our behalf. I understand that Mayor Foley has signed up as part of the city uh, league um, in uh, support of pending legislation that has been introduced that really regulates the role of the small g and uh, provides additional parameters of control at the municipal level. However, we also know that there are multiple cities in California that have implemented ordinances within the construct of the law with exactly similar clauses that we are looking for. And we demand the same. No 5G, no 5G, no 5G, no 5G, no 5G, no 5G. No 5G, no 5G, no 5G, no 5G, no 5G, no 5G.